That is Breckenridge Ski Resort in Colorado. I am heading back to Quandary Peak today, a 14,000 foot mountain in Colorado. And yes, uh, I, gotta, I gotta be efficient today, very, very efficient. So I will be filming, of course. But uh, a storm is rolling in this afternoon, although it's nice and warm today, so it's it might be a rain-snow mix. Anyway, I gotta be efficient, and we're gonna do our best. We're gonna do our best to recruit some red blood cells, some true grit, and get this baby done, all right? Woo, it's a doozy, it's a doozy. Next week is the race, so this is basically my last hard effort before the race. So anyway, all right. Here we go. Next week's race, it's called America's Uphill, uh, and it's in uh, Aspen, Colorado. It's a vertical K race, so a thousand meters of climbing over, I think just over two and a half miles. And basically it's runners versus Nordic skiers. Like you can either do skiing or you can do running. Isn't that, I've never been in a race before where there's literally, a, it's a Nordic skier, I think it's called Nordic, or no, is that cross country skiing? It's the skiers that have skins on the bottom and they basically can climb up hills very quickly. Well, in this parking lot at the base of Quandry near Breckenridge, a skier just left the parking lot and he looked pretty fit, looked pretty fast. I'm gonna see if I can catch him in Yes, I think we're going to take out the Arctic Claw 300 up into uh, this mountain and see if I can catch this guy just to see like how fast does a skier move uphill compared to a runner. Crazy. It's just crazy. All right, let's lace up. Come on. That hurt. I hope those red blood cells are coming in. Come on, red blood cells, come on. Oh, baby. Woo. That last, that last 15 minutes was one of the harder 14er pushes I've ever made at the top of a mountain. Oh, oh, the wind, the wind.
Oh, there it is. There it is. YouTube family. Okay. Oh, that was good. I'm glad you could come along the journey for that. Uh, you've been up here before, though. This is just uh, it's pretty remarkable views on Quandry. Okay. I'll tell you the vert, the overall time, and the distance back at the studio. Another box arrived. Uh-oh, what is going on here? It's a little small. It's a little small to be a running shoe box. We're gonna open this up tomorrow. I'm sorry, I just, I don't want, I wanna save it for tomorrow. Come back tomorrow. We will open this box up together. Fascinating. If you have a guess, go for it down below. All right, and before we get to those red blood cells, a quick shout out to Marty. Marty is the 1,000th runner to join up in Demore Global Running. That's incredible. A thousand runners. Just think, if we all got together, and we will do a virtual run somehow at some point, but if we all got together in a park and had a starting line, we would be a pretty, re a, a force to be reckoned with on a start. Like, think of a thousand, if you've been to a race where, the, where there's a thousand runners, that's a lot of runners. So it's amazing and it's literally every continent. Maybe, gosh, do we have anybody in Antarctica? Let us know down in the comments if you live in Antarctica. That'd be amazing. So shout out to Marty for being the 1,000th runner. And this is insane. Listen to this. And I'm not going to pronounce this correctly. Apologize. Mitsuhiro Uema from Japan. Mitsuhiro Uema is part of Demore Global Running. What is he doing, ladies and gentlemen? He is running a marathon every day for a hundred days in a row. What? That's, and guess what? He's part, okay, so I, every now and then I check the, the leaderboard on the Demore Global Running Group and basically it, it accumulates, and I think it's working again now, by the way. Uh, it wasn't working yesterday, but it basically shows like how much all of us are working and striving for our goals in mileage or kilometers and I noticed a couple days ago that Mitsuhuro Uema from Japan was like at 150 miles for the week. And I was like, wait a minute, that's a lot of running. What is going on here? And so I did a little digging and sure enough, he's doing this, I don't know, personal challenge. Anyway, Mitsuhuro, congrats, he's at like day 90. If you see this video, get in touch with me. I would love to interview you uh, live for everybody to hear the story of why you are doing this. A hundred marathons in a row every single day. That's amazing. So kudos to you. All right, and moving on to red blood cells. And again, as you know, I'm a history guy. I didn't study biochemistry or anatomy, but bear with me. So I'm pretty, I feel confident in the science that I'm going to communicate to you, but I'm sure, I'm sure there's some scientists out there who are much more uh, well-versed in the depths of science than I am. So definitely give more information down below in the comments. Okay. Red blood cells, what do, what do red blood cells do? They carry the oxygen through our body, okay? So when we breathe in oxygen through our, our, uh, our respiratory system, through our mouths into our lungs, it then gets transferred to red blood cells. So in th if you think about it, huh, if I have more oxygen in my muscles, in my organs, I'm going to be able to perform better as an endurance athlete, right? All right, does that make sense? So red blood cells can actually be, I'm just gonna use the term recruited. Uh, yeah, I'm just gonna use the term recruited uh, at higher altitudes. And to help explain this point, look at this ladies and gentlemen, I came prepared today. All right, so this is sea level down here. This arrow pointing up is altitude, going up in altitude. This says barometric pressure up here, also called uh, atmospheric pressure. And basically, these little blue dots represent oxygen in the air. So, the closer you are to sea level, the more atmosphere there is above the oxygen. Therefore, the oxygen uh, molecules get compressed down closer and closer the, the closer you get to sea level. And then as you go up in altitude, 
they start to spread out, okay? And that is why, that is why, let me just see, I'm doing this left-handed, bear with me. That is why the further we go up in the, in, uh, in altitude, up a mountain, in an airplane, there is less oxygen uh, because the oxygen is being spread, is spreading apart because there's less atmosphere pressing down on the oxygen. Does that make sense? And therefore, the human body is absolutely incredible. Uh, it knows this is happening and, um, okay. <laughs> Basic, okay, you ready for this? I, I, I came prepared. What happens is that uh, our kidneys uh, trigger a protein called erythropoietin, EPO. All right, I don't even know, I don't know how to say that, but we're just, it's called EPO. You've probably heard of EPO, maybe not in the greatest, uh, and we're not gonna get into that tonight, but this is the protein that the kidney produces, which releases more red blood cells into our bloodstream. Not only are there more red blood cells, but they're bigger. So, and this happens, this happens when we go up in altitude for living, for training, uh, just for being alive, okay? This is happening and we don't even know it. And this is why if you come visit Colorado or you go to the Himalayas or you go to the Alps or wherever in the world, you ha or the Andes down in South America, you have to adapt uh, to the altitude or else you'll you'll pass out, you can, you can get really sick really quickly. And so again, red blood cells carry oxygen. If we are training at altitude, uh, our body is naturally creating more red blood cells through the kidney, through this protein, and then depositing it into our bloodstream. And that is how we are able to carry more oxygen to our muscles, and this is why all the endurance athletes for the Olympics train at altitude, especially uh, right before the Olympics. And then usually the Olympics are near sea level or right at sea level, and then they come down to sea level. And based on the research I've done, when you come down to sea level, you will retain those red blood cells that you've produced for 10 to 14 days. Isn't that fascinating? And then after 14 days, the benefit begins to go away, okay? So you want, if you're, training for a race, you want to be in that 10 to 14 day window. Um, okay, moving on real quick. I live at 5,280 feet above sea level. That is why Denver is called the Mile High City. Today, I went and trained at, well, I topped, at, at, topped out at 14,000 feet above sea level, which is interesting. That's basically half the height of Everest. And that just blows, my, I got Everest, that just blows, my, like the Himalayas, you are on another level. It's, it's amazing. And so I don't want to dishearten everybody who lives at sea level. Um, okay, I did a little research. Slide Mountain in the Catskills in upstate New York is 4,100 feet above sea level. Brasstown Bald in Georgia is 4,700 feet above sea level. Tim's Hill in Wisconsin is 1,900 feet above sea level, okay? And why do I bring these elevations up? Based on the research that I've done over the years, 2,000 feet above sea level is basically the bottom of the railing as far as getting a benefit from training at altitude. Like, 2,000 feet is, is, is good. It's not great, but it's better than sea level. So if you live near the ocean, I would say get on Google and start looking up places that might be closer than you think that are around 2,000 feet above sea level, okay? And then uh, 5,000 feet is preferred. Seven to 8,000 feet above sea level is considered the money shot. So Flagstaff, Arizona, I believe is like 7,800 feet or 7,500 feet. And then you can go up higher from there. Um, and then obviously Boulder is a big place to train because you got, you live at 5,000 feet, but then you can, or 6,000 feet, but then you can easily get up to 8,000 feet above sea level. Uh, what was the other one? And listen, I'm not as familiar with, in fact, I wanna ask if you live out, this is not the question of the day. If you live outside the United States and I was coming to visit you, where would I go train to get some elevation gain and some altitude training? Okay, so let me know down in the comments if you're in Singapore, if you're in, uh, if you're in Mongolia. I don't know if anybody's watching in Mongolia, but if you're in uh, the Scandinavian countries, or if you're in uh, Morocco, or wherever in the world that you're watching. And yes, the Great Rift Valley, right where the Kenyans train, that goes. It's like right at 8,000 feet. So. 
Um, I just don't want to dishearten you if you live at sea level. Like, listen, you can still seek out elevation. You might have to drive just a little bit. And just to recap, listen, I love training at altitude. You know that. But if you live at sea level, you can work on your speed, okay? Because you've got more oxygen to work with. So it's give and take. It's give and take. And I was not going to bring this up, but I'm not afraid because we're a YouTube family here. I do not... I don't... I don't believe in, in altitude tents. I think it's, I don't want to say cheating, but I think it's cutting corners. I don't know. And listen, that's a controversial uh, subject, but I just feel like uh, it's really in that walking the line in that gray area of blood doping. You know, it's like, it's just like using something that is not all natural. I don't know. Anyway, I just want to put that out there and I don't want to open up a huge can of worms. I'm very open to having a constructive dialogue about that down in the comments, but I'm just not a believer. I don't know. I'm not a believer in it. I think we should either seek out altitude if we really want it or again use the natural surround um, the natural landscape around it. And that keyword for today has got to be red, right? For red blood cells down in the comments. Thanks for hitting it up. And the question of the day. Have you ever trained at altitude? What was it like for you? Was it good? Was it not? Did you get sick? Like what happened when you trained at altitude? And if you haven't trained at altitude, that's okay. What is the highest elevation that you've ever been in or ever been to in your entire life? Like, have you ever, maybe you have been to the Himalayas or the Andes, or maybe it's just your, like if maybe it's a big hill by your house. Like, I don't know, like share about your experience with elevation. That would be amazing. And that is it. Again, thanks for bearing with me on the science. Hopefully I did an okay job there explaining it for all of you. And I'm excited about um, red blood cells. It's a good thing. It's a good thing in 2019. Seek beauty, work hard, and love each other. See you tomorrow. Woo!